Hello everyone. Um, today we're talking about security policies and security associations regarding IPsec. If you haven't watched the video on IPsec yet, I'd encourage you to do so. You will find the link to the video in the description of this one. First, we talk about security policies. Security policies are stored within security policy databases. These SPDs are then used to derive the security policies for a certain connection. The security policies themselves state the protocol that's, that has to be used, um, AH or ESP, the mode it can be used, remember we have tunnel mode or transport mode, the destination and source IP, the transport protocol, whether it's TCP, UDP, and the destination and source port. An example of a security policy can be seen here. I will not go into detail, it's very um, basic information what you see here. You, it basically says if you want to talk to this host, um, to this IP, you have to use, for example, ESP in tunnel mode. And it has to be encrypted, therefore, and authenticated. Now let's go to security associations. Uh, the security association holds the properties of the connection uh, the security parameters, meaning which encryption to use, which authentication method to use. We have the context of the security connection and it is uh, unidirectional, meaning if you, so if Alice talks to Bob and she sends a package to him, this has one security association. If he wants to respond with another one, uh, or with, another, with a packet of his own, he needs an own security association. Now what's uh, inside the security association, we have the key, the authentication process and the mode, so tunnel or transport mode. Uh, the authentication process, meaning um, it says which uh, encryption algorithm is used uh, or with um, authentication algorithm is used. We have the validity, um, so how long the association is uh, valid. We have an initializing vector for the algorithms used and we have the IP addresses. So you can see here uh, an example of a security association. As I've said, we have the mode, which is ESP in tunnel mode. Uh, we have the encryption algorithm to be used. It's triple DES with counter uh, blockchain mode. And you can see here the initializing vector for the algorithm. Um, Similarly, you have here the algorithm that has to be used for authentication is HMAC MD5 and the initializing, initializing vector for the hashing algorithm. These security associations are likewise stored in a security association database. Now, if no security association exists between, um, in a connection between two hosts, then the host, the sending host, um, derives the security association from the security policy. Um, this can happen either manually or more often, or which is standard nowadays, using the Internet Key Exchange Protocol, currently in version 2. And the way this works is, or how these two are connected, is by the SPIs or the Security Policy Index. You can see here in the security association, the security policy index six or seven, seven six nine rather, um, points to the security policy being used for this security association. How does this work in practice? Let's say Alice wants to send a package to Bob. The security policy database states that there is a security association to be used. So the the um, the transport of the messages or of the package packages has to be encrypted, for example, using ESP or AH or whatever. And now looking uh, in Alice's SAD in her security association database results in no match because there has been no association created yet with Bob, Let's, because maybe because she never talked to him before. This is where the IKE comes into place. The um, well, the algorithm or the IKE derives the security association from the security policy, um, which states you have to use, for example, ESP in tunnel mode. And this security association likewise gets saved in Bob's security association database. When Alice now sends her package, um, which could be AHO, ESP, doesn't really matter, 
um, then Bob, in order to decrypt it and, or in order to know which algorithms to use, so basically in order to decrypt it, has to use this SPI, so the security policy index. He uses this to look up the security policy in his own security policy database and derive the, what we're using the index, the uh, corresponding security association from his security association database. As mentioned before, this is only unidirectional. So if Bob wants to send something to Alice, this whole process has to be run again using this time his security policy in order to establish a security association coming from Bob to Alice. I hope I made this uh, clear. I tried to make it uh, uh, as trivial or as simple as possible. Um, if you want to look at your security associations or in your security policies, um, if you set up a um, a VPN uh, server on your own using StrongSwan, for example, then uh, it will become much clearer. But uh, for, th for the theory purpose, I think I've covered it in this video extensively. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, tell me in the comments uh, if you want to know more about VPNs or about IPsec. And uh, see you in the next video.